Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick until the end of the video where I have two bonus problems that are similar to this one which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of 2 is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log or ln on both sides. So now I have ln x squared is equal to ln 3 to the power of x. And now an important property of logarithms is that if I take the natural log or even normal log of something in the form a to the power of b, I can actually move my x1 and b here to the front of the logarithm. So this is going to equal b times ln a or b times log a. So in this case, we're using ln. So now we can move our exponent here to the front for both of them, actually. So now I'm going to have 2 times ln x is equal to x times ln 3. Now I'm going to divide by 2x on both sides. So now for my right hand side, these two x's will cancel out. For my left hand side, these two twos will cancel out. So I'd be left with ln x over x is equal to ln 3 over 2. Now, if I take e to the power of ln a, these this is the same thing as simply a, because the e here and the ln, they simply cancel out. Same with e to the power of ln x. This is the same thing as x, because the e and ln cancel out. So x here, I'm going to replace with e to the power of ln x. So now I have ln x over e to the power of ln x is equal to ln 3 over 2. Now, e to the power of ln x over e to the power of ln x, that's the same thing as ln x times 1 over e to the power of ln x. And now 1 over e to the power of ln x, that's the same thing as e to the power of negative ln x. Now, an important function for logarithms is known as the W Lambert function. And taking the W Lambert function of something in the form a times e to the power of a, this will give you simply a. So in this case, as you can see, a, we have ln x and we have negative ln x. And to use this property, these two need to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So now I have negative ln x times e to the power of negative ln x is equal to negative ln 3 over 2. And now, as you can see, both a's are the same. And now we can go ahead and take the W Lambert function on both sides. So now I have W of negative ln x times e to the power of negative ln x is equal to W of negative ln 3 over 2. Now, this is simply equal to A, which is negative ln x in this case. So now I have negative ln x is equal to W of negative ln 3 over 2. Now, remember the property, say that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, this is equal to b times ln a. So now I'm actually going to reverse this property, and in this case I have negative 1 times ln x, and I'm going to move this negative 1 to the front again. So now I have ln x to the power of negative 1 is equal to w of negative ln 3 over 2. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and take e to the power of both sides. So now I have e to the power of ln x to the power of negative one is equal to e to the power of w of negative ln three over two. And now remember how e and ln cancel out. So I'll simply be left with x to the power of negative one is equal to e to the power of w of negative ln three over two. Now x to the power of negative one, this is the same thing as one over x. So I have one over x is equal to e to the power of w of negative ln three over two. And now these two can simply switch. So now I have x is equal to one over e to the power of w of negative ln three over two. So this is our answer. All right, so I have five to the power of x plus six is equal to six to the power of x plus five. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the log on both sides. So now I have log five to the power of x plus six is equal to log six to the power of x plus five. And now an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent and b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal b times log a. So now I can move x plus six to the front as well as x plus five to the front. So now I have x plus six times log five is equal to x plus five times log six. Now I can go ahead and distribute the x and the six to this. So now I have x times log five plus six times log five is equal to, I'm gonna do the same thing with this side, x times log six plus five times log six. So now I'm gonna move all the terms with x on one side. So to do that, I'm gonna subtract x times log six on both sides. And then I'm going to subtract six times log five on both sides. So now, on this side, these two cancel out. On this side, these two cancel out. So I'll be left with x times log five minus x times log six is equal to five times log six minus six times log five. Now, we want to isolate x, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log 5 minus, or sorry, sorry, sorry. Before doing that, from these two, I'm going to factor out x. So now I have x times log 5 minus log 6 is equal to 5 times log 6 minus 6 times log 5. And now I can go ahead and divide both sides by log 5 minus log 6. So then these two cancel out. I'll be left with x is equal to five times log six minus six times log five over log five minus log six. So this is our answer. All right, so I five to the power of k is equal to zero. So for a solution, we start with five to the power of k is equal to zero. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take the log on both sides. So now I have log five to the power of k is equal to zero. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. And what is actually so useful about this property is, let's say we have seven to the power of x is equal to nine, right? Well, if we use this property, before, before using this property first off, x as you see, this is an exponent. And we can't really do much when x is an exponent because it's really hard to solve for x, in this case especially, because this x is going to be a decimal. 
So by using this property, we first have to take the log on both sides. And then we can use this property by moving x to the front. So we have x times log 7 is equal to log 9. And now, because x is an actual term, it's pretty simple to solve for it. All we have to do is divide by log 7 on both sides. And we get x is equal to log 9 over log 7. So as you can see, this property is really useful for solving for x when it's an exponent. So going back to our normal problem here, we had log 5 to the power of k is equal to log 0. Now we can move this exponent k to the front of the logarithm. So now I have k times log 5 is equal to log 0. Now, we're obviously solving for a k, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log 5. So then these two will cancel out. And I'll be left with k is equal to log 0 over log 5. Now, log 0, this is actually undefined. And log 5, this is equal to 0 0.6990. So k is equal to undefined over 0 0.6990. And if you you can't really divide undefined by anything because it's simply undefined. So this means that k is just undefined. It has no value. You can't take the log of 0. And also, you can't take the power of any number and make it 0. Because 0 is not possible. You can get 1 because if you took 5 to the power of 0, that would equal 1. But 0 is impossible. You can't take the power of a number and get zero.